All right, um, before I say good night, I'm gonna post uh, one last video. <clears throat> or so I plan to. That's what I plan to do. Uh, anyways, um, I wanna talk about something, you know. Um, I, um, so, 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 so I'll start like this. Um, and I've talked about this before. When I was a kid, I just had a pass. I don't know why it was. Uh, maybe because I wasn't, like, I was genuinely just like a child, but, um, I, uh, I had a pass. I mean, I, I mean, really, like, um, you know, people would joke with you, uh, sometimes people would get upset or mad or once in a while, and then, you know, people have issues, but that's everywhere, and that's normal. But other than that, I didn't, I never felt like, I never felt like there was anything like, like I, like there was any fuckery going on, and that's because elementary, uh, elementary, junior high, and high school are, uh, in my opinion, are much nicer places than the adult world. You might say I'm wrong. I don't know. In my opinion, those places are 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 are, are quite nice places. I'd say, you know, you don't really have anyone bugging you. Um, you do your work. Everybody, everybody just wants to pass and 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 and, and have a little bit of a fun no, at lunchtime or whatever. You go eat whatever you want to eat, or or you go play whatever sport you want to play, whatever the case is, and, and you do that. I mean, for the most part, I'd say that you know, kids are typically pretty nice, in my opinion. Now, my challenges began. Um, when I turned, well, I, I'd say when I turned 18. Now, I turned 18, right? I get my secondary school diploma, that's what they call it here. I got it from a, another place, but but it was an actual place that, that gave me the diploma. And um, and so I get that diploma, and the first thing I think, and, and what I was planning was, before getting that diploma, I was like, man, when I get the diploma, I'm gonna start applying for a job. Because, you know, college costs a lot of money and, and you got to do this and that. Why, why don't I just get a job and I can I can actually spend money on myself for the first time. So I get this job. And I'm working in the kitchen for a, for, for a nice hotel. Um, and I'm at the lowest position. And and, and and in the beginning, they did bother. But, but that's how union positions are. When you start off, people are worried that when you finish your probation, it's harder to fire you. And they're worried that you might just fuck off or whatever. And and this is not like legit, fuck, they're, they, they're worried that you might just say, hey, screw you, I'm part of the un union and I'm only gonna do like two hours of work and there's nothing you can do about it. And if you have a problem, go talk to the union heads or whatever, that's typically it. So they get, but everybody gets a hard time. When, when you when you start a union job, unless you know a manager or, 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 or you, you have friends in there, somebody who brought you in, I had no reference, I got that job just myself. Um, but, uh, but, but usually they will, they will bug you. And then when your probation is done, um, people kind of accept you. And once they accept you, um, you don't really have, I, I didn't have a hard time. I didn't have a hard time at all. Um, but I noticed, you know, that, you know, once I hit 19, like once, once things kind of went forward a bit, you know what I mean? Like. Cause, cause I use that job as, as as an excuse to kind of also, cause I had late hours, so I could I could go downtown and I could go to a, go wherever I wanted or whatnot, but um like like the party or whatever. But the the thing is that you know I uh um so I I I I got older I guess you know and the, and 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 became an adult. You know, I would say at that 18, 19 years old, I became an adult. Um, so I remember, um, again, I, I didn't feel like anybody was bugging. You know what I mean? And I, um, I started, um, what do you call it? Um, I, I got my apartment and all that. And nobody really used to, I mean, I mean, everybody has some kind of interactual, whatever is nonsense that goes on, but there was nobody, I never felt like there was something like from the outside, but, 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 the, but, and I'll explain, I was secretive. Now, now I've talked about how I was a shadow, blah, 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 and how I lived. I was very secretive. You know, I didn't talk to anybody. 
you know, I didn't tell anybody, oh, today I'm going to do this. I'm nothing. I, I literally broke off contact with everybody that I knew in order. And the whole idea was I broke off contact because I wanted to find out who I really was. I wanted to know myself versus being influenced by others. I wanted to create my own influence and find out who I was. Now, I would say that, um, you know, once I hit like 20, 20 years old, 20, 21, um, 20, 21 years old, that's when it really began. You know, I started feeling like, but I changed quite a bit too. The way I walked, the way I talked, the way I did everything changed. And, and, and it was like everybody, all of a sudden I had a problem everywhere I went. I couldn't, um, um, back then I got, I got, I, I got along with just doing the bare minimum. I would do the bare minimum. Everyone was like, well, or, or, or I would do a decent job. Everyone was like, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Nobody would bug me. I never felt like anybody had any malicious intentions as from like the outside. I didn't really have a lot of enemies when I was a kid. I was not the type of person who made enemies. Now, I hit 21, 22. That's when life really started going salty. I'm 23, then life goes up. And then it wasn't until I traveled because I went in 2014. I had a job as a valet full time for a hotel. And I, in about, in about five or six months, six months, I did three different, three different times and three different trips, um, in, in those six months. And I remember when I went to Colombia, cause I went to South America for, for six weeks or six, seven weeks, I go to, I, I, I go to Colombia and I, I, and everything's cool, by the way, in Colombia, like I always, I, I remember going there and I never felt like there was anybody bugging me. You know what I mean? I, I was doing everything, going everywhere. And I didn't, I, like, yeah, there, there would be people every now and then trying to fuck with me. But for the most part, I mean, I, I like, I never felt like there was some kind of outside people with any interest into my life or what I was doing or anything like that. You know what I mean? I didn't, uh, I, I, I didn't feel like that. <clears throat> I remember, I, um, so I remember before coming back, something changed. I don't know what it was. You know, something just changed uh, with me and, and and the way people were viewing me. Because I remember I go to the airport and I'm taking a flight uh, back to Toronto. Um, and when I go in, they go, hey, come, come here. Well, what's going on? He goes, we got to put you through body scan. And it was only out of everybody on the flight, everybody on the airplane. It was me. And it was another uh, uh, older man, um, and and they were putting us through body scans and everything, trying to see if we were smuggling cocaine in our bodies or, or in our luggage. And then, like, like I thought it was done. And then I go to show my passport to the lady at the airport. She looks at my passport and she goes, "What do you do?" I said, "I work. I work. I work for a hotel." You know what she said to me? She said, "You work in a job." You know, people thought I was a fucking narco, man. I'm not even joking. Everybody thought I was a fucking narco and that I was taking drugs back to Toronto. They After they body scanned and everything, and after she saw me, they sent me to a next place. Now, I think I'm going to drop my luggage or whatever. They announced while we're waiting for the flight and everything, they announced that I think it was like three of us, maybe, or all I remember is me and another girl. This girl was going to Cancun, Mexico. I was going to, I was going to, sorry, I was going to Panama. And then from Panama, I was going to Toronto. This girl was going to Cancun, Mexico. And very good looking girl, by the way, tall, very, very attractive. They called me and her to this this area to check our luggage. We go in there and, and there's this big thing on the top and it says anti-narcoticals. And they're like going through our luggage, like each and every little thing, trying to look for cocaine, going through our shit. And, and, and I'm like, oh, that's weird, you know? Um, and, then, and, and, and then we get on the plane and things just got weirder and weirder. We're just like, dude, like what's going on with my life here, man? Like shit is weird. You know, I got different people trying to talk to me. I got different stuff going on. I'm like, I'm like, oh, dude, like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, like this is not the way life was. Anyways, I, I get back to Toronto. I get a taxi cab. It's like three in the morning or something. I get a taxi cab to go back home. And I feel cold because Colombia was a very hot country. And I feel cold. Like, really really cold you know um now i get back 
and it's about late September. It's late September, I'm not working at my job anymore. And um, I'm thinking life is gonna be the same as when I was here in Toronto, you know what I mean? And by the way, that was, that was the first time like I took a trip that long and was on my own. That was, that was the first time. At that time I was maybe 23 years old, 23 turning 24. Now I get back and then and, and I'm at my in my room in my bedroom, you know, thinking life is just gonna be back. To, I'm like, dude, why don't I just go work for like some? Because we had a labor ready, which which you go there and they go, okay, you you get there at six a.m. You say I want to work, and they just send you to the first place. People are looking for temp workers or whatever, and basically you finish your shift and they get, and they sign a check. You get paid right there. So whatever you get paid, you get paid right away. You go with labor ready. You work that day and you get that day's pay right there which is cool. I found out about, I was like, man, I'm gonna go to labor ready. You know, so I'm working there and I'm working shitty factory jobs. All of a sudden I'm like, dude, what's going on with my life, man? Every time I go outside, every time I walk by the mall, everybody's fucking like noticing me. You know what I mean? And, and sometimes it was like, people were scared of me. And I was like, what the fuck is going on, man? I'd be walking around and, and people would be like scared. And I'm talking about even like, like, scary looking guys they were like scared of me and i was like what the fuck is going on man what the hell is going on and i didn't like it like i wasn't the type of person to be like oh yeah everybody's i'm loving that. i i was like what the fuck is going on man it was so strange it was like my life had totally changed i just didn't understand what was going on all of a sudden there's people in my business um i've never had that in my whole life people are asking People are on me, just like when I was at the airport, when they were fucking body scanning me, sending me the luggage, everything. People are on me. Oh, what is he doing? What does he do on his own time? What is he up to? People are like, like, like people are checking me out. You know, like I go for jobs and they're checking me out. Um, um, I have this lady fucking trying to accuse me that I that I'm defrauding the labor ready company and she's telling me this is fraud and I'm gonna call the cops and all that shit. I was like, what the fuck is going on, man? Like I don't get what's going on. Why am I being treated like this? Like what is the reason that I'm being treated like this? Cause I never got treated like that in my whole life. So 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 that was September that was late September of 2014 when I got back. And March 2015, six months later, is when I robbed that bank. Um it was like I couldn't get I couldn't get like my life was so much harder. I couldn't get anything. I remember before everything was super easy. Everybody treated me nice, everything was super easy. All of a sudden everybody is on my fucking case, man. Can't get anybody off of me. Everybody wants to know where I'm going, how I spend my money, what I'm, it's like ludicrous in that song, Rollout. Everybody's the fuck on me. I don't know what's going on. Dude, that, I, I, it drove me to the point of so much um, uncontrolled aggression, um, uh, or I would say controlled aggression, to the point that I robbed that bank. It was crazy. And it just went on like that for like another year. Then I started, that's when I first started kind of getting a bit of a connection out there. You know what I mean? But it, but it was it was almost out of like that like like what the fuck am I supposed to do because I can't live my life anymore. You know what I mean? So I start connecting a little bit. I start getting into things. A little just a little bit in, in, into like like really scary stuff. Like I'm talking about like life and death. I'm talking about like really and I start getting into that. Um and, and 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 life just goes on, and then and 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 then I don't know, like t 2019, I I I I get. Hold on, I'm gonna start the next video.